Hello out there YouTube, welcome to the OK Good Review channel. And today guys, we are doing another model build. It's your big day, D-Struck coming through again on solo note. Uh, Leo doesn't um, <laughs> doesn't like to participate in these too much because there's, and I don't blame him, there's nothing really for him to do except for stand there and watch me glue stuff for a few seconds and and then wait. You know, glue and wait, glue and wait, or paint and wait, paint and wait. So that process is not as interesting to him as just watching, you know, like a time lapse video. Uh, which is which is kind of where I think a lot of this is, is also going. I might do some of these on a simpler build possibly where, where we can do an actual time lapse with everything involved. It's just a lot of stop start guys because you can't really do things until the glue is is a lot more set or, or you get stuff that is misaligned and all that kind of stuff. So and then if you get paint that's that's not at least somewhat dry guys. Uh, I, I almost never let it go to a full cure before I start working on it again doing one of these builds, but if you don't at least let it set somewhat, you get paint all over everything and that's just a pain. So anyway guys, as to this particular truck, uh, I, I decided to move away from cars for a minute guys, and I wasn't, I was gonna look at getting a Chev or a Ford next, but as it turned out guys, uh, I have not done a monogram yet. So this is the third, I guess, major model kit company from when I was making them years and years ago when I was a lot younger. Now there's other ones out there. Tamiya uh, has some and uh, Testers I've seen has also come out with some. They don't really see the prominence out there as far as them. Monogram you almost never see anymore since they were absorbed into Ravel. In fact they both have a very similar logo. And AMT I still see a lot of those out there. Really it's more Ravel and AMT at this point guys as far as what's out there uh, for the majority anyway. So, but I had not done an uh, actual, just a straight monogram guys, and I found this one. I've been wanting to do a pickup for a while guys, and I just, I get really kind of fussy about pickups. And so I went through a lot of them. I did one a long time ago in my youth, along with a, a GTO judge. And I have not been able to find either one of those cars, and I uh, obviously can't find the models after this amount of time. When you move out of your parents' house guys, Definitely anything that you don't want to have to <laughs> try to recreate years and years later, uh, take with you and, or at least keep it somewhere that you'll be able to find it again. Anyway, with this one, guys, it's part of the dream ride. So this is actually a concept vehicle, guys, from the nineteen ninety from the nineteen ninety six Motor Show, and I like Rams, guys. I like Dodges. I'm a, I'm a Mopar guy. And so this one was one that I was kind of excited about. I, I, I like doing the, the Viper motor trucks. I think those are really cool. This one has a lot more of the semi look to the front end. Uh, I do have other trucks that are coming down the pipeline. Uh, and maybe some other non-car things, guys, as well, coming down the pipeline. Uh, I've got some Chevs, some Fords, more Mopars, of course. So a lot of cool stuff. I'm having a, just an excellent time building these things guys these are these are really a lot of fun i enjoy these um and of course i got to get my paint game up guys so i can move on to the transformers and and just probably keep doing these most of these are winding up in the um in my office guys for just the the regular shelf decor and stuff because these these actually are perfect for that so anyway there's just various tips here um we have washed so study the assembly drawings Unlike a lot of the transformers guys you see us don't not using instructions at all, which is fine for that in this If you don't use the instructions guys, it's usually not a good plan <laughs> Things don't always work out as well if you do that uh, There's washing the plastic parts in a mild detergent solution. I did that before guys when we were Years and years ago, and I didn't find it made a difference. I can't be bothered with it now check the feet fit of each piece before cementing a place this is Something guys I did a lot more of on the last car than the first car So and you can see a different difference between the two guys if you haven't checked out those videos 
It is a Dodge Charger and a Dodge Challenger. Charger was a fail. The Challenger was not perfect, but it was definitely a lot more of a success. Uh, scrape paint plating and paint from areas to be cemented. I do this to an extent. I don't. I don't rigorously do this and allow paint to dry thoroughly. We already talked about that. So, guys, let's um, look at the side here. It's the same shot as the front. Um, it's a skill level. This is a skill level two. Various tools need are required. And here we have some discussion of the VTS handling like a sports car and so on and so forth. Uh, this is not just moderately stuff about the actual vehicle. And again, it was a concept car. So we can see there's some good detail on the engine for the Viper motor, guys. A little bit of blue. So there's a lot of two-tone stuff, guys. Uh, this is going to be, I think, probably a pretty good challenge uh, for my paint skills, guys. I did get some new brushes for this build, so I'm excited to try those out. Anyway, there's that's uh, basically it for the packaging. And let's bust this baby open. Okay, all right, so I went with, guys, custom blue metal flake, guys. I also have this color, I believe, for another car coming up. But I love this color, guys. This it's this is dope. I don't know, hopefully you can see the metallic flake in the cap. So we'll be painting the body that color. Uh, here's the glass up to the side. Here is the rims. And these rims are built a little bit differently than some of the other ones I have. So that'll be interesting. Uh, we've got five tires. I'm assuming one of these is a spare. And of course we have the actual kit itself before we get to that though. So we got some stickers. Uh, I was gonna tape this off and try to try to paint it white. I'm pleased I don't need to do that. Guys, yeah, very pleased. And there's gonna be some custom coloration on this as well. Um, so we've got just some more commentary about the vehicle itself. So this is basically the Viper pickup, guys, more or less. And so we've got, so we have, we have 11 colors, which, and I have most of these colors, guys, uh, or something close enough that I'm just gonna use. There's a number of different grays, a number of different blacks. There's a yellow, I don't know if I'm using the yellow, I probably am not. Uh, turn signal amber. The, uh, one of the nice things about this is the taillights are already tinted red, so I won't need to do that. That's a nice touch. And of course, just different different things here. I don't know that we're gonna be doing this uh, on the back. I haven't quite decided yet, guys. And just the different instructions here. Uh, the instructions are pretty well laid out. I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Very simple, very uh, clear cut. It's good. Okay, so we need to bust open our uh, our parts here. All right. So we have this. So this guys, I'm just looking at this. This is going to introduce some complications with the spray paint. I can see that already. Um, and here we have. Chassis and some of the undercarriage parts. And it's separate bag we have. We never have too many bags, guys. Separate bag, we've got more of the tires, the grill section. And I will probably do the same thing I did on that as I did on my Dakota. Uh, the interior section. So we've got some pre gluing stuff here to go. Uh, we've got uh, the dashboard. We've got. Uh, the exhaust system, steering wheel, and over here we've got the engine, and just different parts related to that, some headers, belt assembly, rear end, struts, or I mean the uh, leaf springs. Okay guys, and here we have the just different parts. So guys, I can choose to put this on or not. Uh, there's the hood. This I want to say is the back of the of the thing. There's the tailgate there. So guys, this is probably, I'm probably gonna spray paint this also, guys. So, and then of course we have the actual shell itself, guys. So 
So this, this presents an interesting dilemma, guys. So I was planning on spray painting this, guys, but now uh, I, I need to rethink this, I think, because parts of this are not going to be necessarily blue, so I'm not sure exactly how much I'd be saving to do that. Plus, you can see, so here's here's some battery. It's a flashing, I think, over here. Got to see if that's flash or if that's something different. Interesting guys, interesting decision to mold this like this. Doing this all in brush strokes, guys, seems like it would be a pretty long amount of time. Plus, I really been wanting to try out the spray paint. So let's just go with this in blue. Hey guys, we're jumping back into it for just a minute here. And so we got the body done, the bumper I had to touch up. Um, dash is done. I came up with a new color, guys. I actually did paint mixing on the dash right there. And then we've got the seats and the interior done. And over here we have the hood and some other parts. Uh, some of that will need to be repainted. So far I'm three paints. Nope, sorry. So far I'm four paints into this. And as you can see, still got quite a few to go. And there is a ton of parts on here, guys. I didn't realize how many parts <laughs> there were on this thing, guys, when I started this. There are, to give you an idea, the engine is separate from the oil pan. So, very, very extensive build, guys. Uh, painting is still not done, so I need to finish all the pre-painting stuff, guys. Hopefully, I'll be done tomorrow, but there is a lot of high detail work on this, so I may need to get a magnifying glass uh, with the light on it as well. Uh, so, I'm trying a new brush, trying the Model Master brush which tends to work a little bit better with certain paints and a lot worse with certain other paints. So uh, it appears that a, just a good mix of different brushes is really the way to go with, with this, um, with this, uh, <coughs> with this enterprise. So there it is guys, the end of day one, just have a few things painted. Uh, I'm going to try to have more of these painted by the end of the day tomorrow. Uh, so we can start actually, assembling things and there is just so much stuff to try to assemble guys so this is gonna be a lot more extensive <laughs> than i than i had in mind but um yeah lots of stuff guys all right guys here we are at the end of day two and there's no white on this particular build guys so i have to color everything uh most of the paint is done there is some two-tone stuff I need to finish. Uh, the grill needs to be finished. The leaf rings need to be finished. The box needs to be finished. And that, I believe, is about it. Uh, belts need to be painted black. There's so much detail work on this, guys. There, it's 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 incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. There's there's a ton of this. It's been a lot of fun. A lot of two-tone work so far, guys. And. Changing up the brushes has really, really, really helped. Uh, certain paints, for instance, this right here, I did this in graphite. And you can see graphite is a not a good coverage color at all. Um, I also did the bottom of the truck. What's interesting is that it'll try to pool. It'll try to pool in areas so you get these little black spots. So it's kind of a neat effect. I'm just going to ride with it, guys. Uh, if I hate it in the morning, then I'll I'll just change it out. But the blue spray paint blue came out pretty good, guys. Overall, actually, surprisingly, I thought that was going to be rubbish, but uh, it looks pretty good. Outside of that, all these little parts are done. I glued the engine block together um, because I'm modifying the colors of the paint on it. I want to go for more of a classic engine red with accents. Um, I painted the the uh, Viper words on the valve covers over there. Hopefully that'll come out. I I didn't. Uh, I need to get a magnifying glass with the light, guys. And until I get that, it's going to be. I don't know if we can even pull this in. Some of that fine detail work. You can see kind of a, a little bit of the red there. Until I get that, guys, a lot of this detail work is going to be uh, honestly beyond me. Just because I just, I, my, 
I can't focus well enough in the light in Spider Central. I did add a light. Guys, I added a spotlight, so hopefully the colors and the brightness is coming through a little bit better on this, guys. But anyway, end of day two, painting is not yet complete. Uh, very little assembly has actually taken place. Um, I hope to get a lot of that done tomorrow. Uh, I may try to put the seats together here, possibly. Not that that really helps anything, but it makes me feel productive. <laughs> anyway, guys, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm just gonna. I think I'm just gonna do. Worry about assembly tomorrow, but for right now, um, one more day. Touch up painting, which I'll probably do tomorrow morning. And then from there, it is on to assembly in one of the more complicated builds, guys, that I've attempted recently, or perhaps ever. Okay, back again, and guys, we're midway through the third day, and I'm gonna say the paint is done. So let's take a look here at these seats that I also built. As you can see, I've been playing a lot with two-tone paints here, guys. Uh, oil pan came separate. I just added that back to the engine block. This is not the color the engine is listed at in the instructions, but I I like the red. I like the Chrysler red a lot, guys. So over here, uh, everything, there's nothing white anymore other than like the back side of the, of the interior door panels. Guys, tons of two-tone work. This one is a triple tone. So you can see on the grill, I added red for the Ram. Uh, blah, silver, chrome silver, and black. And a lot of this, guys, I had to go two coats of paint on. Now, mostly this was the Model Masters, guys. I've got some metallics from the Model Masters. They're kind of trashy colors, guys, to be honest with you. They do not cover well, and everything that I used, graphite metallic, everything that I used, the black metallic with, guys, I had to basically put two coats of paint on. Everything else here, guys, every other thing that's on here is a single coat of paint, except for the um, except for the truck, which was two passes with the aerosol. But aerosol, I was just pleased to get coverage of two passes and not have to do, you know, three or more. Uh, the, this is a custom color, guys, on the dashboard. This is a color I actually, I actually mixed, and you can kind of see part of it peeking out from underneath my my uh, paint area over there. The tires and some of the other stuff I'm gonna start building here momentarily, guys. I'm still waiting for the paint to dry, so uh, there were, you can see here's my paint collection, guys, in the tray. Part of it is underneath there, guys. There is 15 different colors of paint I have right now, guys, and I used probably, see, if, so there's 15 colors of paint, guys. I believe I've used to this point 13 or 14 colors. Uh, so just a lot of painting guys. I, I'm trying to really stretch out guys and do a lot of two-tone work on this and um, So that what does that mean? That means a part of the reason it took me three days Was because I had to do a lot of touch-ups guys not not as many as I was thinking But I, I did wind up having to do just a lot of touch-ups. Uh, you can see right there is the dash insert uh, That one I actually had to take a sticker off do the water transfer sticker guys for that part uh, just because the order for this monogram is really kind of funky so I'm gonna try to get back to, to the way that I did uh, things in the last video guys which was the uh, 71 Challenger TA build uh, feel free to check that out guys I'm trying to get back to that guys so hopefully from this point on I'll be able to just with the painting it's it's a lot easier to, to kind of go through and, and do it like so but I've got to pre-build a lot of this stuff just because this is similar to the AMT in that there's a lot of parts that I, I don't know why the oil pan wasn't connected to the engine, for instance, but a lot of this stuff didn't happen, guys, so I've got to go back and redo it all. Uh, but this is a pretty high detail thing, and so I'm really interested to see you know, how this comes out with the color schemes and everything, guys. I don't know at this point how happy I'm going to be with it, but so far, so good. Uh, overall, I'm pleased with everything. Uh, like I said, a couple trashy paints in the Motor Masters line, but I will, once I run out of Motor Masters, the only thing I like from them so far, guys, of all the paints I have, the only one I actually like is the semi-gloss black. I think that's a really, really high quality paint. However, black is 
probably the easiest color of everything to do. So kind of a low bar there. Anyway, so guys, once this paint dries, we're gonna get on to assembly and uh, that'll be coming up next. All right, guys, so we are here at the end of day four, and just wanted to, let me zoom out here and show you guys. So we have the tires there. In the middle section is the exterior. Um, it's I did some prefab stuff with it, so you can't see uh, the parts where the glue is drying. We've got the exterior to finish tomorrow. We've got, we've got the chassis, in the undercarriage that by far is the biggest pile and then we've got to mount the engine which will probably be part of the chassis and let me get this out of the way for you and guys we have here this is um, all final assembly stuff right now the grill is drying into the hood and we will be um, probably putting in the hinges actually next once that's dry before I get to some of this other stuff, but radiator, radiator shroud, radiator hose. The mirrors will be probably the last thing before I do the decals. Uh, the interior we need to mount as well inside. So uh, this has been a pretty intensive build, guys, uh, so far. Uh, day five, and I'm still, I, I don't think this is going to be done until probably day six, to be honest with you. So at the end of day four, there's still some prefab stuff I can do, but I don't believe I'm going to. I'm just going to save that for the actual section, the sectional build. So possibly, guys, I might still be doing the exterior for day four. I, I'm not quite sure yet. It, it really depends. There's a lot of glue drying right now, and if you start gluing too many things all at the same time, you can kind of create some hurdles for yourself. So I'm trying to avoid doing that. Uh, my guess is that probably I will be looking at the exterior and the chassis tomorrow for day five. And then possibly I'll do final assembly at the end of day five and the striping on day six. Still not quite sure on that, guys. I haven't, I haven't quite fully decided how I'm going to do that. But it's a very, very intensive build, guys. I'm, I'm really mostly happy with how this is coming out. There's still... A lot of paint errors, but I really, really push myself beyond, I think, what my brushes are capable of, to be honest with you guys. So I think that's part of it. I'm just I'm pushing past where, where my brushes can accommodate. And my skill is it's coming back a lot faster than I thought it would. There's not, I mean, the, the, the grill itself, I'll just show you this, guys, as an example. So the grill itself is a triple tone. I did a lot of that on here as well, but you can see... There's a lot of really rough sections uh, because I was just using basically any old brush to try to do that and using the correct brush, being a lot more patient would have helped that out considerably, but it's hard to do sometimes, guys. It's hard to do. Very necessary to do, but it's hard to do, guys, uh, sometimes to take the proper time for things. So it's coming along. I feel 
this is the third one I've done of, uh, after a layoff of uh, 25 to 30 years or so, maybe even longer. And so I'm really pleased with how a lot of this is coming back. I'm trying to pick more technical stuff. I'm trying to pick models I probably wouldn't have attempted uh, back in the day when I was doing these all the time. And I mean, results are mixed right now, guys, but I actually am honestly overall pretty pleased uh, by my recovery here uh, into this. And I've got, right now, I've got a tower of them. So I'll be doing a lot more of these video guys. Hopefully, you guys will check them all out. But whether they draw or not, they're really fun to do, and I like doing them. So there's going to be more of them for the channel. Get some content up there for you guys, you know. Anyway, though. That's going to do it here for day four, and we will be back for day five coming right up. Still talking, still Okay guys, so um, here we are at the end of day six, and this thing is mostly assembled. I gotta put the hood on it, I gotta put both mirrors on it, and I need to stripe it still guys. So we're gonna be into day seven. Uh, there's been painting almost every single day of this, uh, a lot of touching up, a lot of other stuff. We'll be doing close-ups uh, before striping and after striping uh, upstairs. All right, we're going to get out of Spider Central. I've tried to incorporate a light, special light for the Spider Central footage. Hopefully it's going to read a little bit better. Um, I think the next video might be the next one of the one after of a model build, I think, guys, is going to be um, a hybrid of the two. So we'll do some speed work, and we will also do some of this time-lapse stuff just to try to find a good a good combination. I'm not... 100% happy with either of them, guys, uh, having looked through them both, but uh, I'd love your comments on this, and um, of course, whatever you guys want, we'll, we'll definitely try to make happen. For this one, there's some minor issues with the, um, the mold itself, where some of the, some of the stuff wasn't precise enough, and so I had to take um, some measures to try to make it fit. And there's a little bit of slop in there because of that, but I think overall this truck has come out pretty well. I'm really excited to get the actual white striping on it, uh, even though I couldn't find the the uh, painter's tape I wanted to use to make sure the distance is correct. So hopefully, I don't think they are, but hopefully these things are already pre-spaced so we don't run into too many issues. But we'll we'll find out on that.
on day seven. This has been a very, very, very long build, guys. Um, this is probably actually the most the most hours I think probably for anything I've done over the last well actually probably ever but definitely over the last two models this one has taken more time than either the uh the amt or the revel uh my favorite so so far guys the revel has been the most fun to build of all these this is probably the most technically demanding so pretty excited to see how it comes out uh which we will take a look at um on day seven when i uh when i put the decals on but for now guys I'm going to cut this part off here. Um, as you can see, there's two mirrors that need to be put on. The front clip is drying right now, and I had to redo the hinge. I've also had to re-glue a lot of stuff on this particular model, which is kind of annoying. But, I mean, sometimes it happens, guys. Sometimes you just get models that, for whatever reason, just don't, don't quite seem to click. and. Uh, I'm not I'm never quite sure why that's the case, but it was here as well. So uh, after this guys will be Back upstairs in the kitchen for the decals which will be coming up next Okay guys and welcome back to the decal portion of this and you can see we got a lot more light up here, so that'll be good. Got the water ready to go. Uh, this is be the first truck I'm probably gonna use all of these. Um, actually, I shouldn't say that. I'll probably use the 15 stickers, and we got some Dodge emblems. I'll probably put those on somewhere. Maybe on the rear fenders. I had a <laughs> little help bringing this upstairs, and. That little help at this point has cost me one exhaust tip and one of my hood hinges. I only got one of these now. So, um, actually, let's just take a look at this, guys. You can see the grill, not very crisp lines there, guys. Um, it's hard to read the RAM in the red paint. So, my feeling is that I should have, I should have uh, went for probably silver on that and then hit it with the um, the red over the top and floated it. See there's some minor paint errors in the hood itself. Uh, up front you can see here that so there were some mold parts with this. There were some parts that didn't line up very precisely and you can see I didn't do a great job on the firewall. Um, this was painting like I said every single day of the six days. I've kind of stopped at this point but so the engine, the bolts came out pretty well. The Viper on the side, not as well. I should have floated that better. Uh, the the um, forced air intake and a lot of the other stuff looks pretty good. I just left the battery black on this one and added some just minor touches here, guys. So the parts of this came out pretty well. You can see there is another one where I needed to touch that up and didn't. Uh, and you can see in the fender wells, I definitely should have painted this better. The spray paint guys, I was using testers, and I'm not super in love with it, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, custom color on the dash, uh, we've got two-tone seats, seats I actually was pretty happy with. The dash is only so-so, actually it's a, yeah, you can see the black headrest right there. Um, and you can see there's just some flaws in the actual paint job itself. Uh, the undercarriage again suffers for me not having painted everything. So, but that's good to know because on future builds I'll make sure I do that. I'm pretty happy with how the no, I was pretty happy with how the door came out. So I've got to get a loop guys because you can see the high detail stuff is dying. <laughs> it's just uh, just not good here. So um, you can see there's just a lot of spray paint errors in the actual body color itself. And in the back, I used a uh, black metallic over the top to have sort of a bed liner effect. I obviously should have went through and touched all that up too. So, so guys, good lesson here when I'm doing the spray paint. Um, the monkey shines also made the tailgate so it opens and then doesn't ever seem to want to stay closed. But uh, overall, I. 
there's enough good stuff to this that I think I would say probably it, um, I wouldn't call it a fail just yet. So I'm going to put the stripes on it, guys. We'll take a look and see how that's going to go. Uh, but for now, without the stripes, uh, I mean, you can see there's some... The mirror got a little trashy. That needed some more touch-up. And... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think I think the, the truck itself is nice, but some of the some of the parts not fitting correctly was really a nuisance guys that was super super annoying here you can see this didn't fit in all the way uh neither i don't think it did on this side either so there's just some little little minor stuff guys and that was some of those are mold problems to be honest with you so anyway uh let me wrap up with the decals here guys and then we will come back and um we will talk about uh, some of the other changes for this video and some of the other comparisons. Okay guys, and the stripes are done. Now you can see they look off kilter because uh, the hood is not on correctly. But you can see with the hood lined up, you see there it's it's closer. The back panel is not straight either. The tailgate's falling down. So I've got re-gluing to do yet again on this thing. I had some help from the star of our show. Help. <laughs> And of course, guys, what that means, guys, is I don't actually have the white sticker that goes around the license plate. So, the white decals stop about there. So, not the end of the world, guys. This is not probably a truck I'm going to be displaying. Probably not. It's going to... So, this one is going to go wherever the orange charger winds up at some point, which will be... The misfire section guys or guys i'll probably use it to try to do some more paint techniques once i get a little better at it. so the stickers broke for the side there's a ram vts that goes in the driver's door that broke uh, i did get the sticker on the front emblem but i don't like how it looks that's kind of a bust also i'm getting the impression the mirrors are installed upside down so this guys is a borderline fail i think without actually being an outright fail. Unfortunately guys, there's no sides that can be displayed. So I guess actually in that respect, I probably should just call this a fail guys, because there's nowhere, every every side has an error. On this side, it's, it's the hood paint. This side is maybe the best of the lot outside of that. The front, we've got trashy paint errors and the hood doesn't fit. This side, We've got a error in the front part of it. You can see right there, that doesn't line up. So that's not going to be a good way of displaying. And there's never a vehicle I'm going to display from the rear. Although actually if I did, this would be the one, except for then it definitely looks like the mirrors are on wrong. So guys, I think I'm going to have to call this one a fail overall, guys. Just looking at all of the different errors that are in it. This side came the closest, and if it wasn't for that garbage paint on the hood, um, this side probably would be a good display side, but as it is, I think we, we've kind of missed that. So one of the things I tried for this build was to add in a new light so the Spider Central would read better. Uh, I used that light for close-ups on the, some of the paint as well. There's a lot of paint on this. This is in just an unbelievably long build, guys. Of course, by this point, I'm really, really tired of this vehicle. <laughs> I think it's a cool truck, guys. But I'm not super in love with, like, there's a lot of unnecessary steps and, and the mold doesn't fit exactly right, guys, which is kind of a danger when you break everything up into a zillion pieces. So I, I'm not super in love with that, guys. The spray paint, this is the first vehicle I've tried to predominantly spray paint, at least the shell. And I positioned it too close to the wall and it kicked up a lot of dust, which is why you see all the garbage coloration. Also, testers paint as an aerosol is incredibly runny as well and so i probably should have just triple coated it and tried to do it that way the next one i spray paint guys i'm going to a new method for spray painting so hopefully that will fix all this in terms of the brushes and the paints guys the graphite metallic and black metallic so the graphite metallic is on the bottom of this one the, the black metallic is in the box. 
those colors have to be double coated. Uh, those are both Model Masters, and I actually have those kind of shoved off to the side in my paint kit because I really dislike using those. I don't think they're good looking colors. They, they paint horribly. I will say this though, switching to Model Master brushes really made the testers paint a lot easier to use. So I bought some extra of those. Synthetics still I think work really well with the Tamiya's, so I'll keep using the synthetics until they eventually um, just start to fray and wear out. But as far as the testers and Model Masters, those work a lot better with the Model Master brushes, guys. And hopefully in the near future, I'll be... I've got another device coming, which is a loop. It's a, it's a magnifying, lip magnifying glass, which I'm really hoping is going to be able to refine a lot of the paint. Painting in, in Spider Center where it's kind of dark, even with additional lights, it just doesn't light it well enough as being where we are now for this segment of the video. So I've got to adjust that guys. In some ways this is this is a significant step forward as far as painting. In a lot of ways, however guys, mostly, well I shouldn't even say mostly due to the aerosol, mostly just due to, I, I think me not quite understanding how encompassing this was gonna be. There's a, there's a lot of paint errors, but there's a lot of higher detail work and a lot of more challenging paint on this too, guys. So the paint I, I consider somewhat of a mixed bag. I think it's it's a, you know, two steps up and one step back kind of a deal. But I can you can see there's plenty of opportunities. I could paint the RAM and the center caps on the wheels red. I could paint the RAM VTS on the doors. And then I can go back and retouch everything else. The one problem I had, guys, and, and you can see it here, is I was trying to match I was trying to match the blue metal flake from Tester's aerosol with actual paints that come in jars. And those, it was really, really hard, try, hard trying to find something that actually matched. So there's a mix of blue pearlescent and to me is blue metallic. And I think they're close, they're just not precise enough guys. So that's where a lot of those are, are coming as well. When we take a look at the actual manufacturers, AMT, Ravel, Monogram. The Monogram is part of Ravel, but this Monogram kit is a lot more like an AMT kit. And that part was maybe not so good. Uh, I wasn't super in love with, I wasn't super in love with, with how this kind of went together, and especially the, the actual parts of the mold that were mis, mismolded, uh, of which there were actually a number of them. So, this one I followed very precisely. I cut it very precisely, guys. So a lot of the stuff went together like a dream, but there's actually some stuff that was mismolded, and having it mismolded really, really creates an issue when you have this many parts. So that part was not so hot, guys. Uh, of the of the kits, I would probably put them in the order of Ravel first. I had the way more fun building that Challenger, and that video is up as well. Uh, the Charger. I enjoyed a lot of that was my fault guys. So the charger I think I would put second, I would put AMT second, and monogram, honestly, even with this Dream Rides thing, I would not I would not put this anywhere near the top, guys. This one I would I would probably put put last, but I do have other Dream Rides as well to that, that are coming up and hopefully those are gonna be a lot smoother than this one was. Dream rides, it's good to know, are just a obscene amount of work, guys, at least this one was. And it's the first truck I've done, and trucks you really have a lot less room to play with. Like on cars, you have a lot more opportunity to hide flaws and things like that. On this truck, because you're dealing with such limited areas, you you really don't have that, guys. If there's flaws at all, they're going to be fairly apparent, you know, once you put it together. So anyway, guys, there it is. The Dodge Ram VTS, basically the pickup version of a Viper from Monogram guys, part of their Dream Ride series. And parts of this were a lot of fun to do. Um, I don't believe I would do this particular model again though. I didn't enjoy it honestly all that much. So this one and the Charger, I, I didn't like enough to actually want to redo them. The Challenger I had a lot of fun doing, but there's not enough but with the engine being off center guys and you can check that out in the video that's not enough to move the needle for me to want me to rebuild the entire thing again so and this one probably not either most cars i actually do i wouldn't want to do twice 
but maybe someday there will be one that where that changes. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for us this time. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this look at things. If you did, please give us the old thumbs up. Hit the red subscribe button, guys. If you have not done so already, click the blue bell next to the red subscribe button. If you'd like to be notified of the latest, greatest content as it becomes available, guys, I would love to hear from you. Leave me some comments, guys. I know there's a lot of people out there doing these. Way more skilled than I am. Again, I'm coming off at least a 30-year layoff. Might be, be a little bit longer than that. I don't actually remember prior to that, the last model build I did. I mean, they're a lot of fun, guys. I really enjoy getting back into this. So I'm going to keep doing these. Uh, there's a lot of room in my office for models. And other than this one, which got a little frustrating, they're, they're generally a lot of fun, guys. So I'm going to keep doing it. But guys, definitely leave me any comments about stuff you'd like to see. If you guys are doing these, any stuff that you might be doing different. I think getting that lighted magnifying glass is really going to change things. It's the last major piece, guys. Now I've switched out the brushes and I've added more light. It's the last major piece I really think that I kind of need to uh, to get this sorted. So guys, once I get that in, hopefully the paint will go a lot better. And we can I can get better at this and, and start producing some really high-end stuff. As well as getting ready for that Transformers project wherein... We paint all taillights on the back of the vehicles or add additional touches as well. Anyway, guys, let's go do it first this time. We will see you all next time. Bye-bye.